I love days when Life Extension is going to be here. I always learn something. Dr. Crystal Gossard, you haven't met her yet. Brand new doctor with uh, Life Extension. She's actually their clinical corporate trainer. And she's going to talk about heart problems, the cholesterol myths, the cholesterol truths, and so forth. Now, I'm going to open up talking about depression. Is that also a fungal disease? We'll see what science says about it. Toward the end of the show, I want to introduce you to another brand new doctor who attended one of my lectures, and she confirms pretty much what I say about skin disorders and fungus. A whole lot on today's Know the Cause, but understand what we're going to learn is about cholesterol, heart disease, etc. Okay, let's go. Today's Know the Cause is brought to you by Life Extension. Stay healthy, live better. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists. And soon you too will know the cause. Friends, thank you for joining me right now. I wanted to pull a book out uh, right here, The Missing Diagnosis, written by Dr. Orion Truss. He's a physician. I've had this book many, many years. I never met the man. Um, it's just one of these brilliant guys who understand, understood mold, mildew, and fungus. The book says on the cover, they may say you're neurotic, but do you experience depression, anxiety, irrational irritability, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, heartburn, indigestion, loss of self-confidence, yada, yada, yada. Inability to cope, lethargy, symptoms from contact with foods, chemical odors, acne, headaches, in women, urethritis, cystitis, repeated yeast infections, premenstrual tension, uh, menstrual problems in kids, hyperactivity, and it just goes on, on, on. I loved this when I saw it. I bought this. 95 cents in half price books. The book is amazing. It opens with, they may say you're neurotic, but do you experience depression? The numbers are staggering how doctors have gotten us on antidepressants. I could, you know, someday I'd like a, one of those little cameras and just walk into five doctor's offices and sit there and go, yeah, I really feel bad. I would go out with five antidepressants. The side effects of these drugs, be careful. If mania, if walking into a bank with a gun is a side effect of uh, some of these drugs, then I'm worried, folks. I, I just, I listen all the time to the media. When someone walks into some place and shoots it up, my first question always is, which antidepressant did they begin on? I mean, I, that's just the way I think. I'm sorry. Um, so depression, is there a fungal component to depression? <clears throat> This is interesting because years ago I first brought you this information. And now I want to get just a couple of graphics here I want to go over with you. But as I review some of these older, you know, asthma and joint pain, arthritis, and, and the fungal link, we were right decades ago. Science is just now catching up. Folks, it's really exciting. You saw the thing on the news the other day that gut uh, fungi can actually break the blood brain barrier and induce memory loss. Do you think if it gets in the brain, it could induce depression? Of course. OK, so let's go to these graphics. <clears throat> Can fungus cause depression? Remember, this is many years ago. In 2001, researchers tested five commonly used antidepressant drugs. These are called SSRIs against Aspergillus, the, one of the worst fungi. Their findings were reported in the Journal of Antimicrobial Therapy. OK, you got that? They're testing five commonly used antidepressants. It's what many, half of America is probably on. Their research findings. <clears throat> the five SSRIs tested, these are antidepressants in the study, displayed different potencies with respect to both antifungal killing and lag of fungal growth. So this is called fungistatin and fungicidal. Fungicidal is killing the fungus. It is probable that antifungal activity results from, and then I don't think they're right, Okay, it got an interaction with SSRIs and fungal transports, so yada, 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 this is medicine at their best. Want to know what I think is probable? It's not what they said. 
I think it's probable much of our depression is due to fungus. And since SSRIs like Prozac and Zoloft kill fungus, maybe that's why they work so well on people. Could it be? Folks, they're now uh, bringing antifungal drugs on the market to treat cancer. Oh, and they have all the scientific words. Well, obviously, cancer isn't a fungus. The reason this works is it interferes with the hedgehog pathway that cancer cells. Come on. Could the reason antifungals work, because cancer has a fungal component, could the reason Prozac works to help people with depression is because the etiology, the cause of their depression, is fungus. Gee, I wonder if vitamin C, I wonder if resveratrol, I wonder if some of the B vitamins wouldn't be just as useful. Okay? Why do depressants work? Here's my take. Because poisons interfere with brain activity, poisons being mycotoxins. Aspergillus makes poisonous mycotoxins commonly found in our food supply and indoor air. These are slowly poisoning the brain. The antifungal properties that SSRIs possess stop the progression of these mycotoxins because it kills the fungus that makes them. I mean, is that really complex? If I'm a doctor, it's not only erroneous, but it's way, way complex. Ah, oh, it's not how they work. It seems that uh, fungal patterns are disrupted by these SSRIs. Nonsense. Is your fungus due? Uh, is your fungus due? Is your your depression due to fungus? How are you doing on your antidepressants? Pretty good, Doug. I really perform very well. I'm not here to tell you to throw away your antidepressants. I'm hoping, you know what I named this show? Know the cause. I'm hoping you now better understand why that Zoloft works so well for your social anxiety or one thing or another. If this were the case, here's what I'd do. If it weren't severe, I'd find a doctor willing to let me experiment for a few weeks. I'd elevate my brain hormones naturally by exercising regularly. Sometimes drugs help you until you know the cause. I'd talk to my doctor about using the harmless substance uh, supplements. supplements instead of drugs after I was stable. I'd starve fungus, I'd, I'd really fungal spread by following Kaufman diet. It's a different perspective of the same problem. Some people take these drugs and don't notice any side effects, thank God, some do. Uh, but what's the cause of your depression? If antidepressants that are SSRI help, it may be fungus. Okay? Uh, friends, you saw peripherally as we zoomed in the camera there uh, uh, a new guest, somebody we just love. Crystal Gossard is a doctor of clinical nutrition, Dr. Crystal Gossard. She is with Life Extension, of course, you know, with this huge brain. She's working over there with all these people in Florida. Welcome to the show. <laughs> thank you thank so much you for, for having me. In. I'm you, excited to be here. You and I had so much fun before we went on because I was telling Dr. Gossard, a friend of mine, true story, went and got a physical the other day. His cholesterol was 205, and he ended up getting a statin drug. And you and I are both, not that there's anything wrong with that, uh, but we're wondering what's happened. Why was it when I was in the military doing cholesterol tests, a 300 was considered, okay, that's equivocal. And now a 200, oh, that's way too high. So welcome to the show, and thank, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Well, you, you know, that's a story that we hear so often. But the sad part about that is that one number, that 200 cholesterol, that's a calculated number. So, you know, the HDL is, is a part of that number. So maybe your friend has a higher HDL level, but the doctors, you know, they're just looking at the cholesterol number and not really evaluating, you know, the LDL and the HDL and all of those other factors. I am so enamored by your background. You made it through the master's degree and all the dietitian and, and everything, <laughs> and, and you're not making green jello in a hospital. You're helping this wonderful company grow and grow and grow. And she's here to teach us today about some of the myths with cholesterol, yeah. some of the facts. Um, and it's, I'm so happy you're here. And then to offer resolve for those of you who, you know, are a little bit concerned about the old ticker in the blood vessels yeah. and so forth. So give us some of the myths. Well, I think the, the overwhelming number one myth is the fact that cholesterol is the number one risk factor. And that's really the focus for most people is I've got to get my cholesterol yeah. down. I need to get it down. When in fact, life extension, we've done the research and we have identified 19 
risk factors associated with heart disease that many people will never, they'll probably die of heart disease and they would have never ever heard about it. So like fibrinogen, you oh ask my. the average person or your friend, yeah. do you, you know, has your doctor ever tested your fibrinogen? Do you know what it is? What no. about CRP? Yeah. I, you know, the, the common, I think about my dad, he has, you know, high cholesterol, has never had a CRP level tested. And you know, that's your marker for, yes, systemic inflammation yeah. in the body. So, you know, we are missing the mark. And really that heart disease remains the number one cause of death in I the know, country. I know, not number two. Not Use number two. Cancer and then heart disease. It's heart disease. So can I put my MD hat on? Okay. Why, what do I do with these patients that come in here and have 225, 245 cholesterols? Isn't that increasing their risk for a cardiovascular event? Well, it is. And so, and that's, that's a fact. It is a part of the risk factor, but we should be looking deeper. We should be doing more advanced cholesterol testing. You know, your friend, let's find out, you know, what is your LDL? Do you have the small, dense LDL particles that's right. more likely to infiltrate uh, the arterial wall and kind of set up plaque? Or do you have the larger buoyant? And that helps to guide a practitioner as to, you know, what is this person's risk? How do, do they need a medication? Do they need a statin? We know that statins, that's kind of your number one go-to. Somebody's making billions of dollars. Yep. On, on the statin medications, and the research is really showing that uh, the cholesterol, it shouldn't be as low as possible. It's not really uh, reducing mortality. There's like a new class of, of drug out there that can really get the cholesterol down really low, and people are still dying are of you, heart disease. So you're telling me the bottom line. See, what I'm thinking as I'm talking to you, 200 has been established kind of as a random yeah. cutoff, right? What about the person who takes this drug and goes to 170? Are they guaranteed excellent cardiovascular health? No, you're not, because there's so many other risk factors. You oxidize LDL, glycated LDL, and this is LDL where now your excess blood sugar has yeah. now started damaging that LDL. Now it can't deliver the, the <laughs> cholesterol into the cell. And so really understanding these LDL, know that these are transporters around the body. These are transporting cholesterol out to your cell. The HDL, that's the good transport truck that's out there picking up cholesterol. And, you know, you can actually have small or larger HDL molecules as well. Now, don't go away because when we get back, isn't she fascinating? When we get back, we're going to talk about life extension, not regular products, life extension products that might help, okay? We'll be right back with Dr. Gosselin. Dr. Crystal Gossard is here with us today. She's new to us here on TV, but she's been with Life Extension for a while. So long, in fact. You know those wonderful people that you all say, thank God for those people who answer the phone? Guess who gets to train them? You're staring right down the pipe at Dr. <laughs> Crystal Gossard. Um, I have a question for you. Okay. We were talking about cholesterol tests. Yes. And, you know, 20 years ago, I remember everybody would do a finger stick and, you know, gee, your cholesterol is 250, you need a doctor and so forth. How do you break down? Are there tests that can do these tests that can uh, that you talked about earlier, micronizing the cholesterol test? Yes, so uh, Life Extension offers a test called the NMR profile. Okay. And that test will look at uh, the details of the, the particles that's transporting your cholesterol that's around important. the body. That's really So are important. they small, are they large? And, and it can really help to identify your risk. Okay, so just call Life Extension yes. and we'll have their telephone number up. These, I'm really excited about these. I'm really <laughs> excited you're here and I'm really excited about these. Teach us a little bit more about, you know, cholesterol, the good, yes. the bad, and the ugly. Yes, so the first product you see is called Coal Support and it contains artichoke. That's one of the, okay. the main ingredients. Do you like artichoke? I love, I could eat <laughs> Grilled them Grilled artichoke, long. oh, yes. it's so yummy. It is. So who knew that artichoke was beneficial to support your healthy cholesterol levels? One thing that's interesting with this, your typical cholesterol medications, as they're lowering your LDL, they're lowering the good HDL cholesterol. That's the good transport truck. So what uh, artichoke helps to do is help to support healthy cholesterol levels. And uh, there's a protein on your HDL called APOA. 
and mm -hmm. that protein helps the action of HDL, d helps it do its job. Okay. And so your artichoke is really helping the action of that APOA. It's also supporting bile flow. Now we know that cholesterol, that's a component of bile, and that bile is it's actually in that cholesterol is resorbed back into the body from the gut. So the bile is kind of helping you digest your fats. And then it goes back into the body and it contributes to, you know, cholesterol levels in the body. So helping to kind of eliminate that bile through the artichoke is, is very beneficial. Good. Um, the, uh, there's also vitamin B5 in that formula that also helps with energy metabolism and the metabolism with of the your artichoke. fats. Yes. Good, good. So the next one is CoQ10. Yeah, ubiquinol. Ubiquinol, CoQ10. We know that, you know, ubiquinol now is kind of becoming more common. Before, you know, we had the ubiquinone and we were educating the difference between ubiquinone and the more absorbable ubiquinol. Yes. This CoQ10 is unique because it has the, the enhanced mitochondrial support. So that's going to help to get that CoQ10 into the mitochondria where you need it most. And isn't it funny, Dr. Gossard, it's really uh, statin drugs that opened everybody's eyes to CoQ10. Right, you know? because the statins deplete your CoQ10. Right. So here you are trying to support your heart. Right. You're depleting CoQ10. This CoQ10 is helping to support healthy LDL and targeting the oxidation of your Good. LDL as well. Good, excellent. Uh, the next one, oh, this is one of my favorites, endothelial defense. Now the endothelial wall, that's kind of the lining of your blood vessels. When that lining becomes injured, then you really have a problem. So and you can strengthen that. You then. can strengthen it and you can support the flexibility of the arterial wall. It kind of helps to your body the manage the, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So you have pomegranate and orange there you in go. endothelial defense. Pomegranate is it's you know, I, I love the pomegranate fruit. Sometimes a challenge to eat. Yes. <laughs> uh, but this is a standardized pomegranate extract. Wonderful. And then the last one, Florist Heart Health. Mm. Guess what's in there? Yep. Probiotics. Would there be probiotics. Yep. Yep. Probiotics. Who knew supporting the gut would be a way to support heart health? I love this company. They're always on the cutting edge of research, folks. What Dr. Gossard is not saying is stop taking your statin drug. What this company does is encourage you to share stories you learn on Know the Cause from these brilliant people with your doctor. Um, doctor, I'd like to begin taking some supplements here. I know some I'd like to start taking. Can you help me if that's your goal? Can you help me, uh, you know, tighter down some of these? You're amazing. I, well, I thank, thank you. you so much. You and I had the opportunity to talk when during makeup and so forth. Boy, Life Extension just keeps getting better and better and better. Turn to them, folks, when you have questions. Thank yes. you, Dr. Gossip. Thank really you good so to see you. Thank you so much for having me. You bet. I did not meet Dr. Burr when I was giving that lecture. She was there. And afterwards, a really smart producer by the name of John stood up microphone in hand and said, Dr. Burr, tell me more. She's an internal medicine specialist and she talked about skin diseases. What's the etiology? What's the cause? Very often fungus. Listen to her and then I'll be back with my comment on this. Two that uh, success stories, wonderful stories that come to mind um, that I will never forget. I had a female patient who had uh, diffuse, uh, severe dermatitis, and biopsy showed non-specific inflammation. And she had it for a year, and it was becoming more and more severe. She spent a year on steroids to suppress the immune system, and then the dermatologist said, "This isn't working. We're going to put you on an immunosuppressant agent, cyclosporin." And two weeks of taking that freaked her out. The side effects are scary, and she came to me in an integrative practice, and I identified immediately that this is a fungal problem, um, mainly from taking her history. Diet was high in carbohydrates, sugar, and drinking four beers a day. So we completely revamped her diet using food as medicine and um, put her on. I, I really enjoy using a blend of um, antifungals, herbals, um, and also worked on a lot of biofilm disruption. And, and I, I used 
really natural products, herbs, and some uh, charcoal binders and, uh, and diet and kind of healed her gut and digestion. And within a month, her skin was clear. And um, it was just incredible. Doug's work and, and his research and, and uh, his approaches, I've seen it with my own eyes. I'm doing the work and it's remarkable and it's healing people and it's healing the nervous system. And yeah, it's incredible. Patients that I see have seen many practitioners um, and many different specialists and the most recent patient I am seeing has seen 32 different doctors. So we're, we're, we're digging deep, we're getting to the root of the problem um, and, uh, and really I, I see myself as a medical detective, not a medical doctor in that way. Florida, Dr. Burr is my gift to you. If I was symptomatic, look, she's a medical doctor. She's an internal medicine specialist who just happened to note that skin conditions were improving while taking antifungals. The year was 1987. My kids were little tiny. My wife and I packed up Los Angeles, moved to Dallas, Texas, and I took a job with a couple of doctors at Medical City Dallas, a big hospital out here. They were dermatologists. They had seen my work before. They had read my work. When I came in, I kind of changed the slate. Can we try on the patient, skin patients that are failing you? Psoriasis, granuloma annulari, dermatitis, etc. Can we try antifungal drugs? And can we try my diet? Folks, it was staggering. And when I stood in front of these hundreds of physicians, in which Dr. Burr was one of them, uh, I bled. I just opened my heart. You guys have to start ruling out fungus in every disease. Neurological, skin, internal medicine, rule out fungus. How do we do that? You prescribe antifungals for 30 days. No big deal. You then put your patients on a diet that virtually starves fungus or literally starves fungus. It can't stay away from carbs. Okay, watch what happens week after week after week. By the end of a month, you're going to know, more importantly, the patient's going to know that he owns a volume switch. He can turn his symptoms way up by enjoying what he used to, or he can turn them way down. Empower your patients. Give them the right to turn up their symptoms or conversely, shut them off. Okay, I'll be right back with a clip. And there you have it, folks. Look at vitamin C delays human mortality. Olive oil reduces arterial blood clots. You can read all about it because when you call today and order any product Dr. Gossard was talking about, here they are, or all four of them, it's 50% off. Take 50% off. They normally have tremendous prices, tremendous quality. Today, it's 50% off. Uh, and you will start receiving this magazine. I can't get enough of this. It's for sale at airports and so forth. Uh, earlier in the show, I taught you that sometimes depression does have a fungal cause. Know the cause. You learn later from a real physician uh, that sometimes dermatitis has a fungal cause. It's so changing rapidly in clinical medicine. Fungus was never a problem until 20 years ago when a guy named Doug Kaufman started a show, thank you for enjoying it, called Understand Why Your Patient's Sick. I'll see you next time. God bless. Bye-bye.